name and information input, please go ahead and hit that submit button. And then you should be seeing a screen that looks like this. So at that point, you will be, uh, you can go ahead and click on the trebuchet assignment there. And that will get us started to where I need everyone to be. So <clears throat> if I need to go back and go over any of that, or if I need to pop up that class code, um, it is on the presentation. Let me go ahead and throw that in the chat. Oops. So once you get into the part where you see the trebuchet assignment, please just let me know. You can just type in or I'm in in the chat box. Okay, I'll find my correct screen back. Does anyone need the code? Oh, so Lori, hi Lori. <laughs> uh, the district did purchase gizmos, um, but as far as I'm aware, it is only uh, purchased specifically for science. So I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna pan out with everything. Um, I recommend uh, if you're not science to email um, Robin. Robin who? Um, Putney Mandel, I think is her name. Let me pop. Right Robin oh, okay. Mandel. Thank you. Yeah, here I got. Uh, let me do this real quick. Hey, Aaron, I just want to say hi to you in face because Aaron and I used to be uh, co teachers back in the day. And, uh, yes, indeed. and then I'll click, click off. Good to see you, man. Good to hear your Oklahoma accent, buddy. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And as far as Robin's email, I just stuck it in the chat. So if anyone wants to be like, hey, Robin, do I get the gizmos thing? There you go. If, if you're science, I can say uh, more than likely yes. Um, if it's uh, not science, then probably not. And I, I know it's like a guaranteed NGS, but I'm not sure about the other sciences as well. Because I've heard two things. I have heard, number one, it's going to be for NGS classes. And then uh, I read the recent email that said it's in for uh, science. Uh, Jennifer, um, can you see my uh, presented screen? And if you can, the bit.ly to the slides is in the top right. So if you type in that bit.ly, you should be able to get there. And let me see, I was going to pop up. Code once again. All right, so before I cruise on and leave too many people behind, which I would like to avoid, if anyone else needed the class code, there it is, the NVQQXD. You will have to type that in, it's not a link. Aaron, how do I get into that uh, same window? Uh, let's see, Ernie, did you, like if you go to this website, That'll get you to uh, where you need to be. I'm going to give you the quick crash course real quick. So go to that website, click on login and enroll. Don't type in anything for your username, password, and type in the class code that all sorts of awesome people are sharing in the chat. And then create your uh, Gizmos account. And after that, just type in your information, and you can seriously put whatever you want in here. You're not going to need it after today. 
All right, so I think the majority of folks are here and while everyone else kind of gets up to uh, this part right here, after you click on the trebuchet, you should be able to, uh, it should have basically opened up the gizmos and you should be seeing some information that will like let you manipulate things and play with things. It's a simulation. And at the same time, it's an exploration. So this is the part where I kind of want to push you into the realm of uh, what I might do to my students, which is quite often, I don't give them detailed instructions. Now, there are uh, PDFs that go with this, but I'm gonna make the assumption that our like teachers are like a little bit higher level than other folks. So I'm gonna trust that you guys can handle this. So <clears throat> I've got a one through four challenge and I'm gonna give you guys probably 10-ish minutes to just play with this. So my one through four, I want you to, number one, make sure you can identify the components of a trebuchet so that when you're doing, messing with the basic parts, you can figure out what is what. Uh, see if you can figure out how changing specific aspects affect its performance. Like if you make the long arm shorter or if you make the long arm longer, how does that affect how it will pitch the rock through the air? Once you've played with that a little bit, there's a tab where you should be able to go attack a castle. So throw your rocks at the castle and knock that castle down. Now, if you're so good that you happen to break your castle before everyone else, well, there's another castle. Go break the other castle, okay? So <clears throat> this is just get an idea of something that you could put in front of your students. And I like this one because I have a physics teacher background and the trebuchets are awesome. And who doesn't like breaking castles? So. Go play with things. If anyone needs any extra support, I will try to take care of you through the chat. So go ahead and start it up. Like I said, about 10 minutes. And just so I can kind of keep a track of what's going on, if you get like all the way, all the way through and you've broken both castles, let us know in the chat. <clears throat> oh, I also just remembered something. I'm supposed to record this thing for the district. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that button. Is recording freaking.
So how are those castles doing? If you breach the wall, you destroyed the castle. That is correct. So we got a few minutes left. If you want to go for it, um, like one of them is Siege of Acre. Another one is Sterling Castle. Sterling Castle one is a bit more challenging. So go ahead and jump over there and see if you can uh, knock down Sterling Castle. And just one successful hit counts as a, like a successful siege for the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and move on in a little bit more than a minute. If you haven't broke a castle yet, keep on trying. And feel free to try in the background if I move past. But hopefully everyone's busted at least one wall by now. And if not, keep at it. Well, <laughs> I'll have all sorts of other stuff to play for you during the last half, Steve. So uh, don't worry. You can always come back to this and play it for an hour and get paid for it if you want. Exploration. All right, that was my <clears throat> move on thing. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back to my presentation. Okay, so <clears throat> let's uh, talk about what worked, like what did what. Ideally, this is something that for the, the students, 
they should be figuring out, okay, how do different aspects of changing the trebuchet affect its performance? We're looking at things like, uh, like you probably noticed after each shot, it gave you a list of statistics. <clears throat> or, but, <clears throat> excuse me. If you take a look at the, just the page that I have up now, it's got things like launch angle and initial speed and things like that. So just as a real quick, can anyone tell me how changing the prong angle affected the launch? Now we've got all sorts of like generally right ideas. Change the release point, like when the sling actually let go, which did directly affect the launch angle. So that was one of those things that you could have adjusted if like your rock was going too far straight up or too far off to the side. <clears throat> but without getting into all the uh, details of how a trebuchet works, because I'm not here to teach you guys about trebuchets, you get the idea of how the the gizmos exploration thing can be a lot of, uh, it, I mean, it can be very engaging for the kids. I mean, you guys are probably, hopefully, having fun pitching your rocks at the castle. Kids like pitching rocks at a castle, too. So, <clears throat> at this point, what I'd like to do is have you guys go back to the main Explore Learning screen. Okay, so for this, you can uh, just like uh, I'd say go ahead and jump out of your um, logged in student account, or you can pop this up on a different screen. Um, here, let me go ahead and throw the link back in for you guys. All right, so back to the main Explorer Learning website. And what I'm going to want us to do now is I want to give you an idea <clears throat> of uh, what we have that's available, even for a free account, because I know we have quite a few math teachers in here. And uh, you will be able to access some things with the free account. If you want the paid account, I'd say talk to your department and make a push with your local principal and if the demand becomes high enough, they might be able to purchase it for you as well. That's kind of what happened with science with us this year. As, uh, we, the principal agreed to purchase it for us, and then it turns out it's a really awesome resource, and now the district bought it. So it's just one of those things that you can check out. But first off, jumping back to the explorelearning.com, go ahead and click on the Browse Gizmos button. And that should bring you up to a screen that looks something like this. And you will see, I have uh, highlighted right here in the red, the see the full list. This will give you a full list of everything that you can access for free. So without any paid account, these gizmos are available. So please go ahead and click on the see the full list. And then you should see something pop up that looks like this. I think there's about 40 I could be wrong about that, but about 40 gizmos that are accessible. And the, the neat thing is it's kind of a smattering of different uh, topics. So everything from like basic math, basic science, and some things are a little bit more higher level, but nothing too wild. So uh, as far as the free gizmos list goes, if you click on any one of those gizmos, you'll see something that pops up like this. And if you click anywhere on this particular part, you should launch the gizmo directly. That'll give you a chance to go play with the simulation. 
uh, you can also click on the lesson info, which uh, should provide, I believe it gives you access to the, uh, the student worksheet that comes with it and a vocabulary sheet. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you guys uh, all of the resources that come with each individual gizmo. So, what, um, oh, here we go. So clicking on either one of those gets you into this screen. This is like your launch the gizmos, play with the simulation, and here's what I was just talking about. There's the student worksheet, there's the vocabulary sheet. So if you wanted to take a look at some demo resources that went with one of those, you can do that. <clears throat> so, because I know teachers need times to go look at things, here's what I'm gonna have you do. I'm gonna give you just a couple of minutes, not a long time, to just go click on something that you find interesting, play with the simulation a little bit, look at what the, the resources might have to offer for you. I'm, let's see, I think the way things are rolling at the moment, I'm gonna give you guys four minutes of just go look. See what is there for you. If you had to, like if you ended up getting a free account, this is what would be available. Um, also, if anyone needs help, please just let me know through the chat. So four minutes, go look at what's there through the free list. <clears throat> there's about 20 seconds till I'm going to scoot on so be thinking about 
wrapping up what you're doing. All right, so jumping back to the slides presentation, basically what I got coming up for you is we're going to go ahead and have you create your teacher account. So <clears throat> once again, please jump back to the, uh, the main uh, website. You can always just click back on the basic Explore Learning link, which I'll post here. And, or you should just be able to like scroll up to the top and click on the gizmos icon and it should take you back to the main screen. So what I would like you to do now is uh, go ahead and click on the sign up free button. And once you click on the sign up free button from the main screen, you're gonna wanna click on the create my account. Now I've got this warning up here just because, well, this was done to me in a previous tech thing, and I want to make sure everyone knows up front what's what. Um, if you start it today, your 30-day thir free access starts today. Um, I know for some people, uh, you might want to wait. If you are going to be running on the free account, especially, like, I know the science teachers are lucky enough to get this, but we have quite a few math teachers in here. If you want to extend that access, you might want to wait to hit that button until you are ready to actually bring this into the classroom. That way you get it for longer. Um, if you don't want to create your account today, that's fine. You can still follow along and you'll still be able to see exactly what is going on. And I can give you an idea of what's available. At a certain point, I will stop and like take requests. It's like, what do you want to see? Because there's over 400 gizmos that are available, um, and it covers all sorts of stuff. But as far as the account creation goes, if you're going to do that, let's go ahead and run through this. So I recommend you go ahead and use your district email for this part and go ahead and click on Create Account. Um, from this point, it's just enter your information and select your school. So it's all your basic stuff. Uh, there will actually be drop down tabs where you should be able to find uh, California, find the Salinas Union High School District, and your particular school will be on the list. As a public school, we are on the list of what's what. So please go ahead and run through that process. Oh, Lori, to answer your question, the students do have an account, but their account is basically exactly what I had you run through earlier when I took you into playing with the trebuchet demo. So, like that kind of account is going to be the student account. Um, most of the time for this, I kind of use it as a exploration activity. But in a little bit, I'll give you a peek at what some of the resources look like. So you can get an idea of what that assignment is. Um, for those of you still working on creating your account, this stuff here, this is just so it can recommend Gizmos. You can click on whatever you want, and you can always change it later. And uh, once you get done with that, I'll talk to you about how to add a class. So when you get up to this screen here, please just let me know in the chat. Just type ready.
So how are we doing on the account creation? Once you're up to the adding a class screen or just what I have up here, just please let me know in the chat. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and run through how to add a class. Um, if, if you're not quite there yet, don't worry. It's quite simple, and it's in the slides, and it's in the PDF. But I figure I want to go ahead and walk through the steps for those of you who are ready to create your account today. And if you do decide to wait, all this uh, – all these resources should be available and honestly it's fairly intuitive so there should be no issues all right so as far as the adding a class goes <clears throat> please just go ahead and click on the spot here that says add a class once you do that you will be seeing a uh, it should just give you the option there's a tab name and full name uh, the tab name just to give you an idea when you have multiple classes that you've added, there'll be little tabs at the top so that you can click between the tabs to access your different classes. Uh, the full name of the class is whatever you want to see for the full name of the class. So just type in your information and then click on Add Class. And once you do that, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and do adding students. Now, one of the things that I like about the, the gizmos is adding the students is kind of something that gets pushed onto the students. You don't actually have to do that much. Um, so this is uh, the class that I had you guys jump in earlier to check out the trebuchet simulation. So in the top right part, once you have added your class, you should see your own unique class code. Now, if you click on that, It'll display it nice and big if you wanted to display that on the board. But what I prefer is there's a button right down here <clears throat> that will basically give you a printed handout. So once you click on the code and then click on this button right here, it will give you a PDF that should look something like this. Now, basically what I do is I download one of these for each individual class. I make sure that I name it something that's uh, extremely easy, like um, period one, sign in, and then save it on my Google Drives with my Gizmos goodies. And then every time I post a Gizmos assignment, I just throw this up. That way, uh, every time they have to do it, there's all the sign in instructions and the code as you can see is right here about in the middle on step three. So that's what I use to get my uh, students enrolled is I just add that. So it's not a matter of you put the students in, you just give them the information and they do it for you. <clears throat> Once, um, well, you don't actually have to have any students to get this, but just as a real quick for the managing class part, there's uh, like the add in the heading and rename class. I usually don't mess with those. I usually get them with pretty much what I want them to be in the beginning with. Uh, but uh, the manage class roster is useful. Um, that'll give you access to the student's username and password. So if they forgot their username or password, you can get it uh, to the student that way. Um, but it's one of those things that, like even if they forget it, they can actually create themselves a new account. And some I've had students in the past that had like three different accounts because they kept forgetting their password. And the cool thing is it didn't mess anything up. They were still able to do the assignments and access everything. And it's like, okay, no problem. doesn't bother me. But, but uh, this is just useful things for managing a class once you get into that. I'm not going to go through all the details of that right now. 
let's get to the fun part. <clears throat> okay. On your main screen up at the top in your class, you should see a find gizmos search icon. So I want you guys to go ahead and click on that. And the cool thing here is if you are uh, the type of person who's very focused on academic standards, you can actually search by standard. If you want to look up something for your specific topic, you got this. If you're teaching out of a specific textbook, you got this. Um, my favorite thing is like I know what I'm teaching, so I can just type in the keyword up at the top. So go ahead and just try this out real quick. Type something in and see what pops up. Once you type something in and you find something, if you wanted to add that gizmo to your class, there's an add to class button right there at the top. And then it gives you the option for like which classes you want to add it to. And if you want to add it to all your classes, there's a nice handy add it to all classes button. So if you're uh, one of those folks who are fortunate enough to have one prep and you decided you want to do this and you have like, a, let's say all math one classes, you could just add it to all your math one classes simultaneously. It saves a lot of trouble. <clears throat> and uh, once you have added any particular gizmo to the class, uh, this little bar here gives you the ability to play with the gizmo a little bit. So there's you can drag gizmos around so you mess with the order in which they appear. Because um, when students log in, if there's multiple gizmos, um, the order that you see them here will be the order that they see them in. Uh, the little eyeball will let you hide gizmos from your students. So say you wanted to add a gizmo to a class because you're prepping, but you don't want the kids to see it yet. If you just click on that, it's added, but they won't know it until you uh, unhide it. Other than that, there's also the options of deleting a gizmo if you didn't want to put it in. Uh, the uh, lesson info on the launch are the same things that we looked at earlier during the quick little exploration. All right. <clears throat> Is anyone, are we good to go at the moment? Can I keep on rolling? All right, so, all right, you guys are on it. So as far as, uh, looking up any particular lesson. Um, I'm using the, the trebuchet demo here, but this is what you can expect for every single, um, well, nearly every single gizmos out there. There's a list of assessment questions. It's usually five multiple choice questions that they're a nice thing that you can um, uh, have the students use as kind of a check for understanding at the end. Um, honestly, a lot of the time I don't use that uh, the assessment question straight through the gizmos. A lot of the time I will pull it out as a separate quiz and then give it to them afterward uh, through Google Forms or through Illuminate, back when we had Illuminate. Um, and sometimes it was kind of neat because the kids kind of got the idea of, oh, Mr. Tisdale might be giving us those questions. I might want to go look at them as a matter of study. And that didn't bother me a bit. It was just kind of a, a quick little check for understanding and uh, kind of kept them on their toes. And this is like, these are the goodies here. Okay, the student exploration sheet is the assignment. Um, the cool thing is there's a PDF and there's a Word version. So if you go look to the PDF and you decide, ooh, I want to really, I, I want to change something about this. You can open up the, uh, the Word document edit to your heart's content, and then save it as a PDF to post to the kids. Um, every one of these comes with an answer key. And as it does say on the website, please make sure that you don't accidentally share it with kids. One of the interesting things about the answer keys is if you download it, it actually like pastes your, um, your email account over the background. So like if you posted it online, Everyone would know it was you because your name's posted across the background. Um, the teacher guide is just what it sounds like, teacher guide, and uh, the vocabulary sheet is just what it sounds like, the vocabulary sheet. So you can search up any particular thing and then just kind of take some time to look 
through the resources. <clears throat> when I give a Gizmos assignment, this is what I do. And this is just a screenshot from um, a rabbit population Gizmos I did with my NGS2 class this past year. So this is pretty much as easy as it is. I give them the sign up that I showed you earlier, that PDF. I give them the vocabulary sheet and I give them the actual assignment. This way through the, uh, the period one sign up, they can access their or get into their accounts, jump straight to the website. The gizmos should be sitting there at the top. They pop up the PDF. At our school, we use Kami very regularly. So I have the students complete it on the PDF using Kami. And then they turn it into me through the, um, through the Google Classroom. All right. So we're pretty close to my uh, 11 o'clock break. And this is something that I specifically wanted to throw up for anyone that wanted to see something. Like if you're a math teacher and you're like, hey, I don't want to turn my account on right now. Um, is there anything in specific that you would like for me to check on what is actually available? And I can go to um, my Explore Learning account and I can uh, basically just go search up whatever you want because I have a paid account right now. So anything that you know you're going to teach and you just want to see? Assessment results for the quizzes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my uh, gizmo screen. Okay, and just as a quick little idea, if I pop open the trebuchet assignment that I had you guys messing with. Loading. my classes here's the trebuchet and uh, I've got recent class results right here this is mostly just from when people were playing around and just pushing buttons to see what does what but so you can see here's you guys and there's your answers and there's your results so that's just the like a little quick easy on uh, checking assessment results and pretty much all of these are going to be a set of five questions so that's just uh, the quick and easy for uh, taking a look at that. So any other topic requests that you guys would like to see before we break in a few seconds? I know for some like the math folks, it's like, well, what about this? What about this? I mean, these guys actually have things all the way up to calculus. So it's kind of cool to see uh, – What's there? Any requests before we jump onto our 15 minutes? All right. In that case, um, it's 11 o'clock right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start our 15-minute break. Let's meet back at 11.15. Good to go? 15 minutes.
All righty, folks. So it is 11.15, so break is over. All right. Now, as part of this presentation, what I have done for you guys is, you know how when you go to district, PDs, you get all sorts of glorious information, and then there's not really much time to actually do anything with it. Well, I have built in for you guys, the last hour is specifically for you to do your own personal deep dive into gizmos. So basically what I'd like you to do during this time is go jump onto that teacher account. Um, if you don't like if you did not use the uh, the 30 day free trial, you can still get a lot done just using the uh, what I showed you with what is available for free. So take some time to go look through the resources, to go play with the simulations, to go check out the vocabulary sheets, check out the pre-built lessons that come with it. Uh, see if you can think of something that you know you're going to be teaching pretty early on in the year. See if you can find a gizmos that supports that. Or if the, there's nothing there that jumps out at you, um, well, if if you get the 30-day the free trial, I pretty much guarantee you're going to find something. But if you want to wait, then I, I can play support for that. I can kind of look and make sure that I can uh, – I can share some resources with you to at least give you a jump start, but you're not going to be able to actually uh, like mess with it in detail until you create your account. So this is teacher deep dive time. Go play with the gizmos, lesson plan, and I am going to be here playing support for the whole hour. So anything that you need, I'm here and I got you, and that's what I'm here for. So. Make sure that if there is something that you want me to check on, that you say so, and I promise I will do my best to help. Um, because this is kind of very much a, a teacher open-ended sandbox time, make sure that you, uh, before you go, before you decide you're done at the end of the hour, that you go ahead and uh, do the evaluation. Uh, it's on the last slide. I'm not going to post it on the chat yet because, well, we don't technically end for another 58 minutes. So I don't want to encourage people to be like, oh, it's sandbox time. I'm going to leave now, get paid for another hour. Um, There's teacher prep time. Use it for what it's good for. So like I said, I'll be here playing support. Anything that you need, come see me. I'll be right here. Any questions before we get going on this uh, just teacher take care of business time? I had a quick question. And Go actually, for it. It's more of a personal question, but uh, I, like the book that I use for Consumer Math is not in there. Do you just do broad search when you look for stuff? Because uh, Consumer Math doesn't really fit normal math. Like the Math 1 stuff is easy to find, but the other stuff seems like it's a little harder to find. <laughs> Right. For consumer math, and I have not personally explored the math resources, but what I would do is I would use a keyword search most likely. Okay. By okay. unit. Okay. Yeah. I, like if you're just working with like percentages or something, then I just, in that search bar, just type in percentage. Okay. Thank you. And usually the searches will, uh, they will pop up quite a few things. It's kind of like a Google search. The ones toward the top will usually be more likely of a, a good hit. And then there's others that will probably do the trick. Okay. Thank you. Welcome.
Hey, Aaron. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, so I'm going to have the free account and I set up an account in here. Can I start developing this and then somehow be able to transfer it over? Do you uh, know? What do you mean by transfer it over? Well, so I don't have, I'm doing the 30 day thing right uh -huh. now because they haven't, they have, there's a code that they have to give us when. Oh, you mean like when you get the, uh, uh -huh. the district um, from my understanding, let me take a look in mine real quick, but I'm pretty sure that in the, uh, like there's a subscription part or there's account settings. And I believe <clears throat> that there are uh, like, there's a renewing a Giz Gizmo subscription article in there, but there should be a way. Okay. I just like right now, my account details show subscription so i'm not sure what it looks like from a not subscription point but if you go to my account on, under account details right i expect that i'm 100 percent on this but i expect that would be the point where you would be able to go in and there should be a specific code provided to uh district teachers that would allow you to upgrade it to a paid subscription okay so in other words if i start setting things up now i shouldn't have to redo it I don't think so. I've never actually done that myself. Okay. So I, I can't give you like an, yes, I absolutely know that for sure answer, but okay. I'm pretty sure that if you like, I tell you, I tell you this much. Um, when I created a account with this thing, oh, cool. it was my own username. It was my uh, own password. And then I just used a district code. So I, okay. I think so. Okay, I just found something. It says, yeah, converting your trial to a paid subscription. You, I guess I could call the phone number if there's any trouble. Okay, I found it. Hey, Mr. Okay. Rothel posted something on the chat about the license. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, cool. Okay, who did? Oh. School has a license. You do not have to rely on limited free accounts. Well, right, but we have to have the code in order to... Right, they haven't given us the code yet, right. and, and, and that has to come from the district, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we have training next week, so I'm sure we'll get it probably... Yes. Just before. Like, I got that email from Robin as well. So, and those are going to be, like, some serious deep dives. That should be way more in detail than what I gave you today. But this is a perfect starting point, so this is awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. <laughs> All right, mute...
folks. <clears throat> we have a smidgy, it looks like we have 12 minutes before we're officially wrapped up for the remainder of the session. So by request, I've gone ahead and posted the evaluation. If uh, that way it's there for when you're ready for it. Um, this does go up to 1215 officially and I will be here till 1215. But the evaluation is ready for you whenever you're ready for it.
All righty, folks. It is 12.15. So we're done. If you have not yet done the evaluation, please do that right now and then go ahead and log out. I think we get our nice little lunch break and then we'll have our other PDs this afternoon session. So enjoy your lunch. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 